Today, I'm lucky enough to talk to Maya Rustam, a Pepperdine Law student who has completed and published her legal journal article on the NFL and their current legal dilemma revolving around their NFL Sunday ticket package. Maya, let's just get right into this thing here. Can you, first of all, just explain to me how you pursued this topic? I began working in the television industry last summer, fell in love with it, wanted to find a way to intersect being able to work in the legal television industry with something topical once I found out I could write this article. Heard a lot of friends watching football games on Reddit, found out the NFL ended up getting into court in August where the Ninth Circuit made a huge reversal, and then I intersected the two topics, and that's how I came up with it. So talking about that Ninth Circuit, uh, can you just explain for me their decision to ultimately revive this case? How did this all kind of go down? And according to your writing, how do you think this also affects the NFL from here? Well, the district court dismissed two antitrust claims, a section one and section two violation, and on appeal, the Ninth Circuit reviewed the dismissal. The Ninth Circuit really highlighted the significance of the NFL's failure to contest the application of the Sports Broadcasting Act to both agreements. Specifically, the NFL didn't contest that broadcasting act to satellite broadcasting. And so that is where the root of the argument came about to revive the case. And ultimately, the court held that the interlocking agreements between the teams and the NFL and the NFL and DirecTV uh, amounted to antitrust violations. And as to how this is going to affect the NFL, there is so much impact on this. The league's attempt to justify granting consumers free over the air games when the teams play locally as Sufficient to not reduce output does in fact reduce output and harms their fan base who are either unwilling or unable to pay the annual subscription. So with the television agreements that are amounting to expire, I believe in 2022, this is really going to revolutionize the television industry. Yeah, the main argument, it appears, uh, with the NFL and DirecTV as well as a pair, they work as a joint venture. They're therefore not violating the antitrust laws. That's what they're arguing. As you mentioned, the deal goes through 2022. On the other end, teams are prevented from competing, ultimately, from their own market viewers as well due to the NFL's uh, what you might call a monopoly here. So according to your research, what do you think you've discovered on this particular debate as a whole? I believe that not only is it concerning that the Ninth Circuit defied Supreme Court precedent by letting the plaintiffs in this court sue, but if the decision is left undisturbed, I think it's going to impact the economy, not just within the sports realm. Um, If the decision takes effect, I think it's going to reduce interbrand competition whenever affiliated entities get together to create something. In addition to what I had previously mentioned, all of the NFL's current agreements with broadcasters are set to expire in the next few years, and the collective bargaining agreement between the league and its players are on the horizon. So I think the most significant point of contention within the league is the split of TV money. So the NFL filing the petition to the Supreme Court to reverse this Ninth Circuit decision is not only going to be pivotal for the league and its teams, but the television industry as a whole. Um, I think to kind of wrap that point up, maybe the solution to the league's issue is lobbying Congress once more to have the Sports Broadcasting Act um, extended not to include just broadcasting, but cable and satellite providers. And so when you look at this as a whole, I I think one thing uh, from your writing that really stood out to me, there was a quote where you said, with an average of over 16 million viewers per game, the league should be vigilant moving forward by focusing on their consumers to make its games accessible to as many people as possible. Could you care to elaborate on that quote as well? Yes, I believe that if this decision ends up taking place, aside from my standing on the plaintiffs who had standing in this case, consumers will not only have the ability to essentially get more fair pricing that they're currently being harmed by with inflated prices, but also carriers who have the ability to bid on the contract with the NFL outside of just direct TV. So I believe that having fair pricing with a wide variety of options, which could include streamers, Um, specific games, specific teams, expanding the option to not just be one monopolized package by DirecTV. Maya, you put a lot of time and effort into this. At the end of the day, what is your ultimate goal for readers to get out of this? I think it would be great not just to to target readers who are tuned into the legal, legal world, but also those who are genuine fans and curious to know the legal inner workings and watch football. For years, the NFL has been dragged in and out of court, being scrutinized for various antitrust exemptions to see Um, American Needle and merchandising license or the Raiders franchise relocation issue. And this one was really important for me and for readers to see how consumers just aren't being taken into consideration, nor are potential carriers who could enter into the market and essentially 
define what antitrust law is put out there to prevent. And to see it on a larger scale, I really want readers to see the intersectionality between this case and other sports leagues and how their contracts could be affected. Maya, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me. Her writing will be a forthcoming academic journal article to be published in the Pepperdine Law Review, Volume 48, Issue 2.